Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and happy July 14th as of when I'm filming this. <laughs> we are over halfway through the year and I thought that it was probably finally time for me to jump on the mid-year book freakout tag because we're there and we're actually slightly past it. So I've got my books, I've got my answers, I'm super excited. I have read some stinking great books this year and I'm just excited to squeal about them some more um, so yeah let's just jump right into the tag question one is best book you've read so far and I should caveat this by saying that I don't think I have one single answer for any of them. Like, I have multiples. So, just be prepared. But I couldn't just pick one because, again, I have read some crazy amazing books so far this year. And it's only July. So, I'll talk about a couple of them now. A Match in the Making by Jen Toronto. Y'all, <sighs> this book. Ah! It just, it felt to me like old school Jen. Like, it was funny. I loved the characters, and it just made me so stinking happy. So this was definitely a great book to read at the beginning. Like, I started off the year strong with that one. Then, y'all, this book right here, why did it take me so long to read it? Oh my goodness, absolutely loved Before I Called You Mine by Nicole Deese. Totally fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the story and her writing style and just all of the things. I loved this book so much. I still think about it and I'm sure this book will pop up a couple times in answers. The next one will not surprise you if you follow me on Instagram. <laughs> or if you know me in person, because the amount of times that I've referenced this in person now um, is probably one of my most talked about books, honestly. Um, Juniper Bean Resorts to Murder by Gracie Ruth Mitchell. This book came out of left field. Uh, like this is, she mashed up rom-com and like murder mystery. I literally read it in one sitting when I read it. It is absolutely delightful. Amazing. She's turning it into like a slight series. I know for sure there's going to be another book. I don't know if it's going to continue on after that. But it's amazing. Gracie Ruth Mitchell is such a fabulous author. It was hilarious. The characters were great. Oh, oh, it was perfect. It was the most perfect blend of rom-com and murder mystery cozy mystery that you could get oh I just loved it so much and then another one I don't have a physical copy yet it comes out tomorrow July 15th so by the time you guys see it it will be up for order um, I will probably wait because I order my books directly from the author to get them signed but I was on the ARC team let's talk about it I woo! Hitting, hitting stuff. I actually haven't officially talked about it with you guys yet. I read Are We There Yet by Savannah Scott. Obsessed. Ub stinking obsessed. This is book one in her new series called Road Trippin'. Pretty sure that's what the series is called. Yeah. Um, and it is fabulous. It is so much fun. There's a Route 66 road trip between four friends, and it is best friend's brother, and there are just great characters, hilarious. I loved it. I don't really know what else to say. All my thoughts that I could put into words are on my review that is up by the time you see this, so just know, absolutely fantastic. Question two is best sequel you've read so far this year, and Honestly, I read a lot of like the third books in a series or finished off series. I only read like two or three sequels. And while they were good, none of them like stood out to me 
like so much where I act like knew my answer right off the bat until my my little eyeballs, my little eyeballs came and rested upon this book, The Bluff by Emma St. Clair. Y'all, I love this book. I love this series. I love this author. But this book was so good. Such a great sequel. James Graham. <sighs> so good. So good. So good. So good. I absolutely adore this. It's a it's a book two in the Grand Brother series, Sheet Cake series. And I think I talked about it. I read it in a vlog, I'm pretty sure. And Graham is or Graham. James is just great. He's brooding. He's quiet. He is just he's very introverted which I loved that character like being in his head he I almost feel like he had social anxiety like he got overwhelmed very easily in big groups um he just like he struggled in that and I just loved how she portrayed his character and Winnie was just so sweet I loved really getting inside her point of view because she's a little more direct than the other girls were like in their group of friends but and that's just like you get from the outside view but I feel like once we were really in her head we saw how much she just cared she was loyal and she loved people and I just loved her so loved that book great sequel great series loved it to bits and pieces question three is a new release you haven't gotten to yet and boy howdy do I have quite a few um for some reason I'm reading kind of slow this year I think I'm, I'm ahead of my reading schedule. I think I've read like 40 something books, which isn't anything to sneeze at. Like if you've read one book this year, congratulations. That's amazing. Um, but I'm just, I can tell that I'm reading a little slower than I normally do. I've been going through some really weird like ruts in my reading. So I have quite a few new releases that I need to get to, but two of them came to mind for sure that I wanted to talk about real quick. And that is the All American by Susie Finkbeiner. This just came out in July, I think July 11th. And then The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese. This is book one in her new uh, Fog Harbor romance series. The cover reveal for book two just released. So cute. Um, but these are two new releases that I would love to get to hopefully soon. This one is definitely top priority. I do have a fun video idea. Fun might not really be the best word since it's probably going to make me very sad when I do it. Um, but I'm thinking about reading like emotional books for a week and Words We Lost is one of the ones that will be included in that because I've heard it's very emotional. But Nicole is amazing at ripping your heart out, stomping on it, but then putting it back together and giving it back to you. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> Question four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I have a couple. Okay, so... First one, right off the back, To Spark a Match by Jen Toronto. This is book two. Yaha-ha. We are getting two books from Jen Toronto this year. What? We got one in January or February. Um, I think it's February. And then we're getting one in November. Stop the presses. Shut the front door. I don't know what you need to do, but I'm excited. So definitely that one, and also it's green, and that makes me very excited. I'm excited for the character who it's about. Then I have You Make It Feel Like Christmas by Tony Shiloh. This comes out in September. Very excited for this. In that same thread, All Spare and Love and Christmas by Sarah Monzen also comes out in September, and I'm very excited about that. I love both those ladies, um, and I'm excited that they both were picked up by Bethany House to do this. Uh, like they're doing Christmas stories so exciting and then one other thing I'm going to mention that I'm very excited about um, it is a very secret project that I am privy to um, but it is happening in the fall and I am very excited about that and then last that I could think of. I mean again there are so many that are coming out but Positively Penelope by Pepper Basham I'm very excited about that as well number five is The Biggest Disappointment and I had a couple that didn't like quite hit the mark like they weren't necessarily memorable but I really didn't have a whole lot that disappointed me I do have a few um but not as many as I have had in previous years and it did take me like scrolling before I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that was disappointing. So 
let's talk about them. I'm going to try not to um, talk a whole lot about them. I'm going to give my brief thoughts. I've talked about two of them. One of them I haven't talked about at all. Um, I still have to figure out how I'm going to word my review. Um, but it was just disappointing because of how much I love the author. So let's chat briefly. Again, don't want to go too into detail with these because I don't want to bash anybody. And I don't bash, um, but I don't want to spend a lot of unnecessarily t unnecessary time on why they were very like big disappointments. But I still want to be upfront and honest with you guys about why I didn't care for the book. Sorry. I'm upstairs. I'm not normally up here. My dog is with me and he keeps moving and I know that I'm looking all over the place. So I apologize. I'm a hot mess. Um, but first, we're going to talk about the most recent disappointment, Famous for Living by Melissa Ferguson. Um, I did a whole vlog on this, and it was disappointing because I went in with high expectations. I should say this about all three books that I have to talk about. I did this to myself. I try not to go into book with expectations because if I do, I'm normally let down, and then that's when I'm disappointed. Uh, but clarity that did come from this book is that I don't think that Melissa Ferguson is the author for me. I am a three strikes, you're out, I'll try your stuff three times. I love her to bits and pieces. I have the, I've had the greatest opportunity to know her for many years. I've met her in person quite a few times. Um, but I don't think that her writing is for me and her stories are for me. So I am... I think I'm going to be done with her works, but that one was a little disappointing because I loved the, the thought of the influencer. I was all for it, but it just fell a little flat. Next oh, was Cruise Shipped by Savannah Scott. And if y'all have been on here, the, even this past year, because I found Savannah Scott last December and have... I have read and loved every single one of her books except this one um I think I touched briefly I also did a vlog on cruise ship I think I touched briefly on some of my thoughts on this I didn't feel like it went very well with the Bordox family um I personally wasn't the biggest fan of Gabriella her character wasn't my favorite I loved Brooks and to me they just didn't mesh very well um yeah, something about this just kind of disappointed me. I, again, but I hyped it up in my own mind. I thought it was going to be something, and it ended up not really. And while I say that I thought it was going to be something, I really don't know what I thought it was going to be. Because it was everything that it says it's going to be. It's a cruise ship romance. But I think that if this had been its own book, like a standalone spin-off story about Gabriella and Brooks from Bordox, I probably would have enjoyed it a little better. I did not like that it was smack at the end of the Getting Shipped series because it just felt out of place. So I think that's why it was disappointing for me and again wasn't really a big fan of the main female character. And the last one was Enchanting the Heiress by Christy Ann Hunter. Guys, I finally finished it! <laughs> I think I started this in a vlog and I it took me forever and forever to finish it but I finished it and I think I gave it a three and a half on Goodreads and haven't written my thoughts down since I just was really disappointed in this story um, Jonas and Harriet were the main characters and I loved them in the other two books like they were great I was so excited when I found out that they were gonna be together I was excited when Harriet was getting her own book like the premise I was pumped color me pumped and call me a stiletto like I was so excited and then it just fell flat the characters did not feel the same whatsoever um, I really didn't like Jonas he was very judgmental um, and very prideful and I just didn't care for how he came off um, very stubborn and not in a good way and then Harriet was a bit of a liar but with like good intentions but a liar still a liar um so I don't know it was weird I didn't really care for it it's been a while since I've read it and I still haven't written a review because again I don't really have a whole lot of like nice things to say um nothing necessarily bad either but I do need to find a way to formulate my response and my review so I can post it because I do 
think that people like I have loved the series and I don't think that you need to read this one to like love her other books and I love Christy so much that's an, this was the one that when it disappointed I was so upset so upset I text my friends as soon as I would sound I was like what do I do I've never Christiane Hunter has never let me down ever and she did just a little but that's okay that's okay I've got some other books by her to read her return to Hawthorne collection and then her new book pixels and paint and I'm very excited her first rom-com she stepped out into the indie world and I'm very excited for her so I'm excited to read that but enchanting the heiress did disappoint me just a wee bit I'm talking a lot um number six is biggest surprise and I have two I have at the cross by Ashton Doro I read this Easter weekend and what surprised me about it was how impactful such a short story was and what an amazing job she did telling the like crucifixion week and resurrection through the eyes of five different people and making it feel like five different people were telling the story and staying accurate to it was great I really enjoyed it very much so I'm looking forward to reading in the manger this Christmas so at the cross surprise me also premonition at Withers Farm by Jimmy Joe Wright it didn't surprise me that it was such a good story because Jamie is very talented I love her have loved her for years what surprised me I was a little apprehensive about reading this I'm not gonna lie this one um, was a little more spiritual than her other ones and not in like the I mean one of the characters is a spiritualist so like doing seances and such and I was very apprehensive about this story because of that however let's discuss something for a second one thing I absolutely applaud Jamie for love her for she is always 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 going to show you that there is she I think she explained herself like this and I put it in my review she explained herself like this at F FRS last year she is like a Scooby-Doo episode she is always going to show you that there is a trick behind the bad guy there is always evil and like human reasons for what's happening always and I love that aspect but then the spiritual part that she brings in is how God overcomes all that he there is hope in him and God overcomes the evils of this world and he knows that they're here but he if we put our trust in him like he's going to take care of us but that doesn't necessarily mean that life isn't going to hurt us and life isn't going to be rough because newsflash it is it's not all roses I mean it is because roses have thorns um but it doesn't just smell good so anywho it very much surprised me how much um like how different that book was from her other books but what didn't surprise me is how much I loved it it was fabulous number seven is new favorite author debut or new to you and we're gonna talk about Nicole Deese for a second hello I cannot believe that that's the first book that I've read by her absolute well full book I read after I did some research I realized that I'd read one of her novellas before totally space but I will count before I called you mine my first book by Nicole Deese and I absolutely loved it totally floored new favorite author lover to bits and pieces so that's biblical fiction and no it's not that is Christian fiction now on my indie side because I am in my rom-com era baby and there are so many amazing ones that I have found but Anna Conwell the love audit yo I forgot to put that on the list amazed balls but Anna Conwell definitely even though I've only read one of her books love it already and I'm so excited to read the rest of the series and anything else she comes out definitely a new favorite number eight is newest fictional crush <laughs> when I tell you the list kept listing okay Joshua stinking Avery mm. I love him I love him Rafe from Royal Gone nope royally rearranged by Emma St. Clair 
Yes, Duke Saunderson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, please. He is from the Getting Shipped series. Censorship is his book, but he makes a cameo in all of them, and I am in love with him. Uh, uh, James. James Graham from The Bluff. I love him. Ugh. He is so brooding and so great. And another one from the Getting Ship series, Chris St. James. <laughs> Y'all, it's okay, good boy. When I tell you there have been some snackalicious snacks in these books, some good old book boyfriends, women, you are killing it writing these men for us. Absolutely wonderful. Totally love them all. Um, number nine is newest favorite character. And I have a couple for this. Um, Ben and Cameron from Are We There Yet? I mean that whole crew, but Ben and Cameron, listen, we've discussed this. We have talked about this. I am all about a bromance. All stinking about it. Every day, all day, 365, 24-7. So when Ben and Cameron from Are We There Yet? came on the scene, I'm obsessed. I love the two of them together so much. They are so different and yet they complement each other so well and they were so stinking fun. Um, Gwendolyn from A Match in the Making by Jen Toronto. I loved her. She just spoke her mind but did it out of love. Like she did it in the best way possible and she just knew who she was and she knew what she was about and she was strong in that and I, oh, I loved her, loved her. If I could be her when I grow up, Yes, please. And then Juniper, Juniper Bean from Juniper Bean Resort, <laughs> Resorts to Murder. What a funky, quirky character. I was all about her, too. We've got some good characters in these books this year. Like, women, these ladies who are writing these books out here killing it. Love it to bits. Question 10 is a book that made you cry. And I don't cry in books. Um, there have been two books that have made me like full on like <laughs> tears I might get a little teary eyed but I don't count that as crying because I mean I get teary eyed talking about books that I love so I'm just a very emotional person but a book that definitely did make me emotional was At the Cross by Ashendaro just because the sheer magnitude of that story because it's real like he did that for us and I think just the fact that it made me really pause and that whole weekend was just a, I did a whole Easter vlog and I that whole weekend was just very um, sombering to me um, so definitely very emotional was uh, at the cross I very very much loved it very good book 11 mm -mm. Question 11, a book that made you happy. Literally every rom-com I've read. Every single stinking rom-com I have picked up this year and put my eyeballs to, I have pretty much have been happy. Pretty much every book I've read this year, I'm not going to lie, I've had a pretty fantastic reading year. And even the books that disappointed me, I still enjoyed the reading experience, you know? So, yeah, good job. Question 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? Y'all, I struggled with this one because I have gotten some really gorgeous books. The covers this year have been stunning. Um, but this one I grabbed because I just thought it was so cute and I totally forgot about it. And I don't know why I did. I'm so upset that I didn't read it around Valentine's Day, but Valentine's Day is coming back around and I'm sure I'll read it then. But, and it's not so much the most like gorgeous book I've purchased but it's definitely so cute and that is my phony valentine by courtney walsh this is a rom-com that she released on valentine's day this year so cute love it i'm very excited again there have been some absolutely stunning covers that have come out this year and i've been very blessed to get quite a few amazing books so i'm sure i could list on and on and on but i will not and the last question, what's a book you need to read by the end of the year? All of them? Is that an answer? I don't think so. Probably not. Not an acceptable one anyways. Well, I got a couple to talk to you about. I have quite a few. Um, I Quite a few review books that I need to finish. But 
I brought just a few up here. So first, Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham. This hit the world by storm, and I finally got my hands on a paper copy this year, and I'm so excited to finally read it. So I would love to try to get to that and Positively Penelope this year by the, by the end of the year. Um, then another series that has taken the world by storm this year, Gabrielle Meyer's Timeless series, book one and two. These could probably be included on some of the most gorgeous covers I've gotten. Stunning. Um, but when the day comes and in this moment, I would love to at least get book one done this year, but I know that people once they've read book one, they're absolutely in love and read book two. So I have both of them. I would love to get to them if possible. And another one is First to Fall by Jenny B. Jones. This book took over Instagram and I would just love, 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 love to get to it. It is a chunk though, and ah, but I'm sure that once I start it, I'm gonna fly through it as I typically do with rom-coms. Um, but yes, this is a book that I would love to try to get to this year before the year is out, so. Yeah, 13 questions, probably an hour of me talking. My videos are getting longer and longer. Um, so if you guys would like short videos, please let me know and I will try to stop talking. But once I get talking about books, it's real hard to get me to shut up, so. But this was a lot of fun. I'm glad I finally did it, got it done. Again, I have had a pretty rock and awesome year. I didn't make any specific goals for myself, I'm pretty sure. I think just making sure I was like reading what I wanted to read and I feel like I've done that and I've read more books because of vlogs and I hope you guys are enjoying the vlogs. I am really loving putting them together. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, so please let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see. If you like the vlogs, if you prefer weekend vlogs or week long vlogs, Again, with how much I talk, there isn't a whole big difference between my timing. I know that my last vlog was an hour and a half, and Oshina comes and she's like, you uploaded a whole movie, and I was like, that was my first thought when I saw the timing, so I apologize, but I'm so thankful for you guys' support and all your comments, your love, all of that. I love this community so much. I love the book world, and I'm so excited that I get to do it, and it's one of my hobbies, and I... I just absolutely love it. So again, let me know what you guys want to see. If you want me to tone down my videos, I can. Maybe I'll try. No promises. Um, or if you guys like the longer stuff, if you want more sit down videos, if you like the vlogs, I want to do what you guys want to do while also doing what like work. Cause I'm I'm down to do whatever. You know, I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty easy. So let me know. Um, yeah, most of my reviews for the books that I have read so far this year are up on Goodreads. Um, I'm working on getting them up on my blog for those who read on blogs and working to get them up on Instagram as well. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on my blog for the love of Christian fiction .com, for the love of Christian fiction literally everywhere else. And I think that's it. All my other links are in the description box below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.